Yo, what is going on, homies? It's your boy, Stumped, back for another OPTC video, and in today's video, we're taking a look at the new treasure map, Nami and Karina, and their filthy, filthy abilities in Pirate Rumble. With this release of this new character, being very unique in the sense that each of them has a different special, depending on which one actually launches the special. They have some very unique abilities in PvP, which makes them very, very strong on the Free Spirit team. Now, if you guys haven't been living under a rock playing this game for probably the last, I don't know, three months, you guys would know that Free Spirits have just been getting buff after buff after buff. And this particular unit, whilst it's probably more of a defensive unit, just brings a whole other dimension to what the Free Spirit team can actually do. They have the ability to reduce cooldowns by 40%. They reduce defense by level 4, and then they reduce another two characters' cooldowns by 40%, which means that they just absolutely terrorize teams with not allowing them to use their specials. This means that when you go up against characters like White Peter Roger, King, Blue Jam, all of those crazy special users like Dofi at the back end of a fight, this particular unit can basically just avoid that. When you compile that with what Luffy's doing with his revive, his damage through defense, Zoro's counter, and the cooldowns that Sanji can give, you can do some ridiculous things with this particular unit, and you can do some ridiculous things with the Free Spirit team. So we're going to take the unit into the PvP Challenge mode, up against some of the, the bigger boppers, starting off with the Kawamatsu fight, because Roger Whitebeard's actually here, and uh, showcase what they can do with a Free Spirit build. Um, Free Spirits, they're just exceptional. Um, the double revive of Zoro and Luffy turns the six-man team into basically an eight-man team, um, gives them a lot more versatility, gives them a lot more dimensions. Not obviously like an 8-man team actually does, but still has that ability as well. Nami and Karina are very interesting too, because as long as you have a Straw Hat on the team, you get access to a particular debuff to the enemy that makes them very, very strong. If you have any of the Straw Hats or any of the uh, Film Gold units, you inflict a level 3 defense down debuff to all enemies. On top of that, they give everyone level 4 HP, and level 4 speed, and they also give a level 3 recovery buff to crew as well. So, their passive isn't disgustingly broken like Luffy's level 6 stats. It's nothing too insane. However, the fact it works for everyone means that this unit can just slot in on any team where any of those Straw Hats are. You can basically slide them in on any team with Tesoro being an amazing PvP character, and you'll actually get this passive to work at its full potential with the level 3 defense down. But the main reason you're going to want to use this character is when you go up against teams that have massive damage output. Characters like King, as I mentioned earlier. Characters like White Peter Roger. Characters like Luffy himself that can just absolutely terrorize teams by going through defense. This Nami Karina unit is actually going to cause absolute havoc to. On a 24 second cooldown. Yes, 24 seconds, which is actually disgusting. Like, it's, it's such a low cooldown. Um, removes 40% of the special TT of two enemies with the highest CT two times. Inflicts level 4 defense down to you after two enemies with the highest CT for 15 seconds two times. So basically the way it works is Nami Karina will reduce 40% of the CT and then lower the defense of the same unit by level 4. And then we'll pick the next two units that have the highest CT after that. So as you can see, it hit Sasaki and Husu and then it moved on to King and Boa. Because King and Boa had a higher CT after Nami and Karina had removed the CT of Sasaki and Who's Who. This is insane. This ability is so strong because 40% is nothing to scoff at. If it was something like 20% or 15%, even something like 10%, this ability would just be non-existent. The fact that it's 40% means that Nami Karina removes the CT enough so that that way, that when the enemy attacks the next time, they basically don't have their special. And if the team doesn't have a lot of speed, it means they have to wait for their next rotation of their attack. This can sometimes never happen if the unit has a lot of low, low, um, lo uh, a lot of low HP, just end up dying. Or if you have a lot more speed than the opposition, and then Sanji gives the cooldowns as well, the 30% cooldowns. Nami Karina can just go again and reduce the cooldowns. And you can just stop characters like Kid and Whitebeard Roger from just popping off altogether. And that way you just don't take the damage at all. The downside to this is it makes the fight a lot stallier and makes it the fight go a lot longer than it needs to. It gives you a lot more security, especially when the enemy's not throwing out specials and they're always throwing out normals. Zoro with his counter is going crazy with the amount of damage that he can do. But with this ability, just basically stops massive damage dealers. Uh, tankier and stallier teams do struggle or they can time you out, I should say. So utilizing Nami and Karina against those fights 
aren't exactly the be-all or end-all. However, you still can do it. You just mainly want to use the character when you're versing high damage opponents. Another upside to reducing the cooldowns, well, besides reducing the cooldowns, I should say, is lowering the defense. When you're coming up against Ruin Powerhouse especially, and if you combine this unit with something like Kid Law, you can just start decimating uh, teams because you've lowered their defense so drastically that characters like Sanji start hitting really hard, the counters of Zoro start going absolutely ballistic, and even your normal attacks just become so drastic because free spirits have so much speed. We have 32 speed with this particular team. As you can see, we're throwing out attacks a lot more frequently than the opposition because they only have 6 speed. Speed doesn't seem to be like an overly broken stat. However, if you're attacking so drastically when you've lowered defense, you can start doing some absurd numbers. Now, obviously, if you come up against something like the Pell fight, which I'll actually touch on as the final fight for this video, um, that cannot matter as much. And as I mentioned, Nami Karina can struggle when you are versing those Stolia teams or those very defensive box teams. Um, but the Free Spirit team has so much diversity that you can just sort of change out units, like bring stuff like Odin for more damage, bring stuff like Roger for more nerfing in that regard in terms of reducing stuff like attack and speed and uh, defense that way. But as you guys can see up against the Apu fight now, even when Apu goes off doing a lot of damage to Luffy, we can still easily just take out the opposition because they just have no defense. The Blackbeard unit coming in actually gives five defense to Powerhouse. Besides that, the, the, the rest of the, the team doesn't have any defense at all. Then when Nami Karina comes around again, Nami Karina are going to reduce more defense. Level 4, Kid Law, if you're versing Driven Powerhouse, they're going to lower defense as well. Both of them have the passive to lower defense by level 3 and by level... I can't remember what it is with Kid Law, maybe it's level 5 or something like that. Um, but as you can see now, Moria and uh, Yamato have hit negative defense. And characters like Blackbeard are taking 15,000 from Zoro's counters. Now, Zoro has definitely jumped up so drastically in my pvp tier list i definitely underrated him with my tier list that video that i put out in my opinion he's now like the top three best pvp unit in the game for defense and offense and the combination of nami karina with zoro is so nice because nami karina just removed the specials which means the counter of zoro becomes so much more viable because the opposition has to attack now this is where things get a little bit shaky i, I did take on this fight um a couple times I just kept getting timed out, except this particular comp was the, the main one that took it down with Nami Karina. You can easily just do this with Odin instead of Nami Karina. Like, the team works so much nicer. But I really wanted to showcase how much Nami Karina does struggle when you are coming up against a disgustingly defense oriented team. Nami Karina is very tailored towards high damage teams, and for this reason, be very careful when you see this unit on defensive teams. This unit is going to be a menace when it comes to defensive wins. This unit is going to be like the new Nami, Robin, and Boa, just way more reliable. Having that guaranteed 40% cooldown to two units twice is so disgusting. On top of that, lowering the defense means that Luffy's going absolutely berserk. Characters like Zoro and his counter is nuts, and even the shots that Sanji starts putting out are so disgustingly strong. After we drop the defense uh, with Kid Law there, we're doing 6,000 damage with the Kid Law like, hit. 6,000 against Pell. Like, that's not okay. It's just it's a disgusting amount of damage. Like, an absurd amount of damage for this particular PvP fight. Pell challenge fight has been renowned as one of the hardest, if not the hardest content in the game for a very long time. Nowadays, not so much. Because uh, we've had a resurgence of strength units and better PvP characters. But this fight is still so incredibly bulky and so incredibly tanky that... Being able to just slow it down even further and just stop specials is just so funny to watch. And watching the Free Spirit team just get better and better and better is so damn nice. So I do want to reiterate to people, if you are using this character on an offensive team, you want to really go up against other offensive builds. In Grand Party, it's going to be very interesting to see how this character fits into the meta. Because remember, as long as you have any of the Straw Hat characters on the team, you're going to get that level 3 defense down. This Nami is actually a, and so Nami Karina is actually Cerebral, so you can easily run them over on the Cerebral team with the Robin Koala Black Maria ulti build. You can do some fun stuff there. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see that. We'd also, you can also just run them on a rainbow team. You can run like Guiltasaurus, you can run Nami Karina, and then you can just chuck on a bunch of other units. You could use something like Luffy, you could use Zoro, um, just to get more cooldowns. Um, just slide in like Tesoro on any team. You can do something like Jack and Shanks crew for bulk and tankiness. So this unit does have a lot of versatility, 
this unit has a lot of options for team building, but I do feel like Free Spirit is probably going to be the, be the best place for them, as they can just help out Luffy just decimate teams, and Zoro just counter to the absolute shit house, which is just so damn funny. This particular fight goes all the way down to the wire, and we actually win on the zero second mark because of Zoro's counter. So, very interesting to see that um, the cooldown reduction that Nami Karin can give can show how powerful a one level 150 Zoro can actually be when actually dealing those counter shots. So, I'm going to wrap the video up here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions of Nami Karina in the comment section below. Why are you down there? Don't forget to belt the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Most importantly, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Night! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God.